to get a distributor that looks like this and you're having some misfire and stalling and dying issues I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to diagnose and fix that today first step is to pop off the cap and inspect that this cap looks fine that's a little bit beat up but <clears throat> I changed that out already and it's fine and um, the rotor seems to be okay as well so it looks like these two parts are gonna be just fine now it's time to move on to the actual electrical testing stuff all right, so on the bottom connector here, just above the plug that goes into the um, magneto and stuff, you have the battery power and tachometer. And you, one thing we're gonna do first is we're gonna test the battery to ground while the switch is on or while your ignition is powered. Make sure you got 12 volts going to this thing. Now my ignition is on a toggle switch, but I'm gonna go ahead and flick this on to energize the ignition. Now I got a fancy multimeter, but you'd want to set that to, I think, the 20 volt setting because you're going up to 12, and it looks like I got 12.6 going to the um, power battery side of the coil. So now I'm just going to test the coil. Now I'm going to go ahead and test the magnetic pickup, which is going to be these two terminals right here. I'm just going to stick the probes in there, and you can see the wires run down into there on that magneto piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you the results. Now when testing resistance, you want to be really careful that your fingers don't touch the electrodes. Looking for around 1500 ohms here. So I believe on the magneto, it's looking for between 5 and 15. So that looks like we're about right. It's on kilo ohms, so 0.8 is 800, which puts us right in the range we're supposed to be. So time to test the coil. Conveniently, the secondary or primary. Primary windings on the coil are actually the battery and tachometer. Now in this case it doesn't matter which probe you hook up negative to positive. We're just looking for less. Alright so we're at less than one ohm which is where we want to be. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave the ground on the positive or the battery terminal down there and I'm going to probe that center piece on the cap. That's going to be hard so I'll tune in once I got that ready to go. So I'm scared to move too much, but we're between 6,000 and 30,000 is where we want to be. Oops, moved it, damn it. Ah, son of a gun. Anyways, we're probing from the center terminal to the battery terminal on there. And we're looking for between 6,000 and 30,000 ohms on the multimeter. Ah, I can't get the damn thing right. There we go, we're at 13.04. So that means the coil is good on both primary and secondary, which leads me to believe that it is the ignition module. Thankfully, I already knew that before I started recording, so I have one. So to remove it, it's just two screws right there and two plugs. You can also take the rotor off. That makes it a little easier to access for you. So you might maybe get some thermal paste on your hand while you're doing this. Good way to get that stuff off. It's real simple. Just eat some chips. It'll come right off. This in particular it came with a little pouch of it so you want to make sure you reapply that stuff to the bottom of this before you put it back on because it will get hot so if you're like me and you're too lazy to pull it out of the car uh, when removing it unplug it from the fixed point and then unplug the wire and then when you're putting it back in plug the wire in first and then kind of snug it up into the fixed point that way it's going to cinch down there is two pins that'll help you line it up now i just got to pop the screws back in the old rotor off you can see there's a little bit of signs of wear here that's not super bad that looks fairly normal but it's not going to hurt to change it so since i already got the parts i was planning on doing that anyways like i said i knew that this was broken i did fix it with some epoxy but apparently that did nothing and it almost seems like it was arcing on something else so i'll bet that was also not helping the way you change this cap anyways <clears throat> a little different from like a points distributor i gotta pop this coil out and swap the coil over to here and all the pins for these connectors so it's just going to be three phillips screws on this one i already took one of them out now here's your ignition coil and you got your connectors coming into here. So be very careful with those not to rip them out because they are pretty easy to rip out. You have a ground here on one of these Phillips screws that's holding it down. Looks like they also have a slot in them too so you can do either one. So go ahead and carefully remove those four and pop this out. Now be careful because there is going to be a spring assembly down in the bottom here. Now I've replaced this on this cap already so it's still going to be pretty new. I'm probably going to save it to be honest but I am going to put the new one on this one just to have that all be nice and fresh and uh yeah anyways just be careful when you pull this off because there is a spring under tension underneath here and that's what's <coughs> pushing down in that little brush there or not brush but terminal kind of works like a brush on a generator sort of i guess i find the easiest way to do this is to just pop the little blade terminals out with 
your needle nose before you try to pop the coil out and that's just gonna make your life a little easier. Ideally, you won't be recording, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down to make this a little easier on myself. All right, so you'll have these two connectors come off and you're also going to have a little connector down there that kind of sits into the body. Make sure you don't forget that because that doesn't come with the new one. That's just your center terminal, probably for the ground, I'm guessing. Went ahead and transferred that piece over to the new cap and you'll notice, like I said, you have this spring assembly here. There's this little rubber grommet on the bottom. Take that off and then you have your little brush, which is basically what makes contact with the center of the rotor and allows it to distribute the spark where it needs to go, hence the name distributor. Like I said, this one's still in pretty good shape, so I'm going to save it, but I am going to put the one that goes with this new cap on that. So anyways, that's like I said, just the reverse taking it off. You're going to set this in there and then set the grommet on top. And there is some grease that it comes with to make sure you're not wearing out the spring prematurely with all the motion. So I'm going to use that as well. Went ahead and greased up that carbon brush, dropped it in the hole, and I put some more grease on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and stick the grommet on there. It looks like it's non-directional, so it doesn't matter which way you go. Pop it on there. Eh, I might go ahead and rub that around a little more because it doesn't matter what the grommet's going to do it much for me. So there we go. <clears throat> Set that on there. Now make sure that it contacts that little bare spot there when you set it back on. And place the coil in place, kind of like a game of operation, I guess. Very tight fit, but it did fit. So now it's just getting these connectors popped back into place and we're good to install it. All right, well, make sure you put that ground wire back on one of the screws and then you're good to go ahead and put the cap back on. Now, like I said, it didn't come with a new cap, so I'm reusing the old one, but honestly, I kind of like that color scheme. Doesn't look half bad. Putting back on, one little trick I did was number on the rotor, or the cap rather, where all the spark plugs would go, and I numbered the spark plug wire, so it makes it a little easier putting everything back together. Probably should have put that at the beginning of the video, but oh well. It's pretty cold and doesn't seem to like to start, or at least before I hopefully fix the issue, so let's see. Uh-oh. Should probably turn the ignition switch on if I want to. There we go. Forget everything's analog in this. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video or found it useful, uh, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, I would really appreciate it and really help me out a lot. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and God bless.